Well, it certainly sounds not redundant. It sounds almost ridiculous, the importance of a fast start. But for this Packer team, it's played such a critical role in getting a team turned around from a season ago. So Lindo Mare puts a foot on it. Jordy Nelson from the goal line. And a good return by Nelson, still on his feet, up to the 33. Boy, the numbers just don't lie about Aaron Rodgers. An outstanding season on his way to back-to-back 4,000-yard -back passing years, 28 touchdowns against just seven interceptions, and perhaps coming off the best quarter of football he has ever had in a game on any level in his career, that fourth quarter at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh last Sunday. play and Rodgers is thrown to the deck but this appears to be a penalty that will go against Seattle. Brandon Meebane jumped a bit early. Offside 90 defense five yard penalty still first down. Of course the officials trying to stay warm today Brian uh, down in their locker room before the game wearing a uh, the same attire scuba divers wear. Well, we need some of that. I, we, I don't know if I would look as good as they do right there. That's a good look. But they are definitely going to stay warm with that gear. So a five-yard penalty. It's first and five for Rodgers and the Packers. Michael Finley, the tight end in motion. They give it to Ryan Grant, who've had a very quiet game last week against the Steelers. Only eight rushing attempts the entire afternoon. But Grant trying to make it back-to-back 1,200-yard -back rushing campaigns. Outstanding receiving core of Driver and Jennings and Finley extremely dangerous out of the tight end position. And up front, they're starting to get some consistency out of this group. It's now six games in a row that they have started together. Rodgers first throw. A tough one for Donald Driver to bring in. It'll bring up third down for Green Bay. Defensively for the Seahawks. Kearney, Meebain, Cole, a former Packer, and Lawrence Jackson up front. Of course, they've been out with Lofa Tutupu since very early in the year, although David Hawthorne leads a team in tackles. has played extremely well and a tall challenge for this Seattle secondary today. Third and four, Rodgers is sacked all the way back in the 29. And Brian Billick, that's something you said the Seahawks had to do to have a chance here today. Well, and they emptied the backfield on that play, left, leaving them only with their five interior linemen. And you can see here, right in here, they've got it on the edge. They release. They're not helping. They're obviously confident against the Seattle Seahawks group, who, quite frankly, really haven't pressured real well so far this year. But with just a five-man protection scheme, they may need to keep somebody in to protect Aaron Rodgers. The only 27 sacks the entire year for Seattle defensively, 11th among all NFC teams. Well, Jeremy Kapanos puts the left foot on it. Very short punt that takes a favorable roll and bounces out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Well, you go all the way back, of course, to 1998. And in the sixth round, the Green Bay Packers chose Matt Hasselbeck out of Boston College. Three years later, they traded him to Seattle. And you see the first five years of his career, 20 games over 500, only missed six games, but has certainly been bit by the injury bug. A back, a rib injury over the last couple of years, and he's playing with a tender throwing shoulder. Julius Jones on first down, a seven-yard pickup, tripped up by Nick Barnett. Seattle plays today without Nate Burleson, missing a second straight game with an injured ankle. We'll see a lot of Justin Forsett out of the backfield as well today, along with Julius Jones. And up front, Locklear, of course, moving over to the left side, replacing the nine-time Pro Bowler Walter Jones. Ray Willis again starts at right tackle. They flip-flop the center and the guard last week. Screen 
to Julius Jones. Lost his footing, preventing him from getting a first down. The Green Bay Packers playing in the 3-4 again today without their nose tackle Ryan Pickett. B.J. Raji gets a start. A pair of rookies in their linebacking core, Brad Jones and Clay Matthews, who leads them with 10 sacks. And Charles Woodson, arguably the NFL's Defensive Player of the Year. Third and two. And Jones slips off one tackle and appears to have enough for a first down. Both teams just in their first two series are beginning to roll players through. They want to challenge these two defenses, try to keep them out of any kind of rhythm, get them guessing as to what it is they're facing on any, any down and distance. So after the Packers go three and out, Seattle picks up a first down. And another, it appears, on a good run by Julius Jones. Jones 563 rushing yards coming into the game today. Here's what Brian you talked about perennial slow starters these Seahawks this year. And when they slow have a slow start like this and the other team is able to get going it has meant a large differential in the scoring. Well, Jones got nine on the carry. So on a second and one. They still appear to be a half a yard shy of a first down. The tackle made by Bigby. Some key inactives today. We talked about Burleson on the defensive side. Aaron Curry had to leave the game last week against Tampa Bay with a stinger in his left arm. John Kuhn out of the lineup. We mentioned Ryan Pickett. He's hard to miss down there. Well, B.J. Raji, who is filling in for Pickett, you visit with Dom Capers. He's excited about the way B.J. Raji is improving. As he said, he was kind of playing on one leg to start, given an uh, injury that he had early in the season. But he has really come on. He's a very active guy, big smile to his face. He knows that he's beginning to feel what it is to be a pro defensive lineman. So third down and what, about three or four inches? Matt Hasselback likes a high tempo offense. He likes to keep a rhythm. He likes to press the defense. We're going to see how much of that he wants to do. Maybe even some no huddle today to keep some of those substitutions with Green Bay off the field. An extra tight end checks in on third down. And Jones has yardage good enough for a first down to the 45. First down. You know, Greg Knapp has made substantial changes to the style of play of the Seattle Seahawks. Very much wants more of a vertical game, and we talked about earlier, they need to see some of that vertical game today against this good Packer defense. Justin Forsett checks into the game for the first time, and a good pickup on first down as he rolls his way inside the 40-yard line. Forsett has seen significant playing time and has certainly made the most of it. And Jim Mora told us yesterday he'll get a lot of playing time over these final two games. Well, there are some that even said that he ought to challenge Julius Jones for the starting spot. Now, most of his yards came on two games. He had big games against Arizona and St. Louis, but he's a nice changeup back to go with Jones. Opening possession. For Seattle, the eighth play of this drive. And for Set, getting close to another first down. Appears to be about a half yard short. Tripped up there by Brad Jones, a rookie out of Colorado. We're seeing a bit of a commitment to the run here, Tom. The, the Seattle Seahawks are 28th in the league in rushing offense. But they know that part of keeping that Green Bay offense in check, not letting them get a good start, is to keep them off the field. So I think we're seeing a concerted effort to run the ball more than maybe they have in the recent weeks. Play fake. And Hasselbeck throws it into the arms of A.J. Hawk. You really got to wonder about the play call there running the ball so effectively and on third down and a foot and a half they decide to throw and it's intercepted by Hawk. 
I'm not quite sure what Matt Hasselbeck thought he saw as he came out of the play fake. You're going to see right here. A.J. Hawks right here. He comes in, fakes the pitch, comes out. It's as though he thought someone was going to leak out, maybe a tight end or the back, almost in a boot fashion. I can't, can't imagine that Hasselbeck even saw A.J. Hawk. It's now 34 takeaways by this Packer defense. Boy, and right now he, he just knows, what, what are you doing? I can't hurt my team this way. A pair of fullbacks leading the way for Ryan Grant. And Grant picks up three yards inside the 35 down to the 32 yard line. Again as you see him come out here uh, I, I don't know I, I couldn't begin to uh, wonder it looks like it maybe got tipped or maybe it slipped out. I'm just not sure where he was going with the ball whether he thought he could throw it out of bounds and get rid of it but the ball came out almost sideways. Four man rush. Donald Driver inside the 20. That's a first down. Donald Driver just 37 yards from his seventh 1,000 yard receiving season. He is Green Bay's all time receptions leader. Donald Driver here in the slot right here. He just runs a little quick out. He's one of the first options. And right now, look at this. We got one, two, three, four guys trying to bring this 11 year pro down. And we'll get a fifth and sixth guy there for good measure. Good. Over, over, over. Over, over. First down, he'll give it to Grant. Ran into his own man. Josh Sitton. Green Bay knows that going into the playoffs if indeed they're able to fight their way in they're going to have to have a good deal of balance and they've got that with Ryan Grant. He's fourth in the NFC in yards gained from scrimmage so he's not only a running threat he's a receiving threat as well. I know they'd like to get him cranked up more on the running side to balance this great passing offense they've got. Grant to the sideline and Brandon Jackson checks in for him. Blitz coming. Rodgers on the screen to Jackson with blockers in front of him to the end zone. And a flag is down. Back behind the line of scrimmage so we wait. Personal foul, roughing the quarterback, 97 defense. That 15 yard penalty will assist on the kickoff. Touchdown. That's Patrick Kearney. Brandon Jackson, his first receiving touchdown of the year. Nice job on the screen here. Here you see they invite him upfield, and now you let stop right here. You take the lead blocker. You've got a guy coming in here to clean up. Nice job convoying down the field. Very tough when you get a free rush at the quarterback to brush by, get a penalty like that on top of it. Mason Crosby, the point after. So the takeaway leads to seven. Packers out to a 7 nothing lead. Only four plays spanning 35 yards. Following the interception by A.J. Hawk. Yeah, and this is the devastating part of the penalty because it's added to the kickoff. You know this thing's going to go sailing into the end zone and you're going to start on your 20. That's if we can kick it and the thing doesn't fall off. It was very windy about an hour ago. The winds have calmed a bit. And that temperature on the rise, Coach Billing, oh, from 18 to 20 degrees. A lot of snow on the ground. It's funny, we're in Baltimore last week, and we're talking about what a great job they did clearing out the snow. That 24 inches up here, that's just a light dusting. Oh, yeah. They don't even bother to get in the snowblower out here with 24 inches. A 
Crosby does indeed hammer one. Four yards into the end zone, and Justin Forsett will take a knee. So, Hasselbeck and company, after the start of a very good drive, we'll try it again when we come back. See, the last three games have been mighty tough for these Seahawks and Jim Mora. First down, they give it to Forsett. And he is met by Brady Popinga and Johnny Jolly. You know, and Hasselback kind of put it on himself. He, when he talked about the slow start, he says, and I'm part of it. Uh, for whatever reason, we're not in rhythm. I really haven't grasped what we're trying to do offensively. And he wasn't necessarily being critical, but he was putting it on himself. He's part of the reason they're not starting well. They hurry up to the line of scrimmage, and they run it again with four set. And he has run out of bounds by Charles Woodson after initial penetration by B.J. Raji. Let's send it back to Los Angeles and check in with Kurt Menefee for a game break. The Saints clinch the number one seed in the NFC with a win today against Tampa. They're off to a good start. Pierre Thomas with a quick touchdown run, and the Saints are on top. 7-0 in the first quarter. Of course, we'll keep you updated, Tom. Kurt, thank you very much. Look forward to further updates throughout the entire afternoon. Matt Hasselbeck on third down under pressure and down he goes in the arms of Nick Barnett. Barnett ran right by Justin Forsett trying to slow him down. You're just going to see a hesitation and then they're going to bring the dogs on the inside. They're going to get Raji and up. They bring an odd four man rush that confused the offensive line of the Seattle Seahawks and able to take down Matt Hasselbeck on third down. So now John Ryan will punt from his own end zone. Packers should get great field position for a second straight series. That one nearly blocked. Nelson lets it bounce, and not a wise choice there by Nelson, and he knew it. He could have caught it in the air at the 40. It bounces nearly 15 yards all the way down to the 25, a 64-yard punt. Today, the final home game of this 2009 regular season for Aaron Rodgers and the Packers and trying to finish it off, of course, on a winning note. And with a little help, a chance to lock down a wild card spot in the NFC playoffs. This is Jermichael Finley, the big tight end. Anytime they flex him out, they're looking to do some damage with him. Second and ten. We're going to see that by both teams here, both Jermichael Finley for the Green Bay Packers and Carlson, John Carlson for the Seattle Seahawks, have the ability to motion or move outside and give the presence of a wide receiver from a tight end set. Both of them use the same way. I know that's a concern for both defenses. Keep an eye on that Carolina New York Giants game throughout the afternoon. Being played in the Meadowlands. Packers need a win and a Giants loss. To secure that playoff berth. Second and ten. And a play blown dead. Delay of the game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. And for those of you that may not have caught it in the upper right hand portion of your screen no score early on that'll be the final game the Giants play at the Meadowlands today. Yeah it's going to and this is something you got to guard against because you don't want your team scoreboard watching to seeing how the other game is going. Let's just pay attention to what we're doing. Let's get this win first. Second down and a ton for Rodgers, and he is sacked for the second time today. The first man there, Corey Redding. Lawrence Jackson, Patrick Kearney came in to finish him off, but Redding, the man who did the damage, and now a late flag comes in in the secondary. Again, now what we're going to see is a release Illegal by contact. Ryan Grant. 57, 
defense. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. Wow. And what we see here is with no tight end in, no running back again. Now this is twice we've left a four man rush against a five man line. The Packers lead the league in giving up sacks. and They've got two already given up two already in this first quarter. They've got to start thinking about leaving the tight end or the back end particularly in a spread out formation to get a, give a little help to those edges of their offensive line. Well they told us David Hawthorne was charged with that penalty. I have a feeling it was Jordan Babineau deep in the secondary because that's where the flag came from. But nonetheless it takes away a sack which would have been a third and 30 and turns it into an automatic first down for Green Bay. And that's as we said earlier this has been the one Achilles heel for the Green Bay Packer offense. They're so efficient. Aaron Rodgers is having such a great year. Uh, but you look here and both the penalties and the sacks the combination of those two. This is the most penalized team in the National Football League. So that combination can be a tough one too. Second and 11 better protection this time but the football comes out of Rogers hands he picks it up and then throws incomplete with an eye on Corey Hall extremely fortunate was Aaron Rodgers to get that ball back. Well it looks like the ball just comes out a little like Matt Hasselbeck that we saw earlier when we questioned whether the ball just slipped out. It is cold that ball gets slick. Now obviously Aaron Rodgers is used to it here but it just literally comes out of the hand not able to get a crip on a cold ball like that. Let me ask you do you ever get used to the cold if you're a quarterback. No, at the end of the day it's just cold. I don't care if you live in it. I don't care if you're used to it. It's cold and for a quarterback it's one of the things they fear the most a cold slick ball. Third and 11 Rodgers pump fakes fires incomplete. So despite a big penalty. During that possession Seattle stands tall forces Green Bay to punt and particularly late in the year you would think Aaron Rodgers would think about going to a glove. That's what most quarterbacks are going to do because there's only so much you can do to keep the balls warm on the sideline. They may try to keep them warm put them near the heaters but eventually the ball is going to be on the field long enough on a cold day like that. They are extremely slick. Capitos a booming punt. Rolls inside the 25 and out of bounds at the 23 yard line. See now Brian Billick your children are grown up. That is the NFL's yeah. version of the baby Bjorn right there. That's a good setup right there. You're right. The grandkids are coming though pretty soon. Not too soon. honey. Not you might want to let your daughters know about yeah, that. Yeah well, hold on. Not too quick. But. First down for the Seahawks trailing seven nothing. Two yard loss Clay Matthews wraps up Julius Jones behind the line of scrimmage some of the early games underway Carolina on the board a three nothing lead against the Giants. Baltimore three three with rival Pittsburgh the Ravens trying to get into the postseason Cincinnati trying yet again to nail down the AFC North and Atlanta in front early over Buffalo seven nothing. Hasselbeck they set up the screen and nearly intercepted again by Johnny Jolly. He already has one pick this year. This is a nice job by Jolly right here as he comes in on the rush. There's a sense that the defensive lineman knows I'm getting home. I'm getting home. Wait a minute. It's too passive. The instincts say no I'm not getting home. This is not right and just jumps up almost tips the ball right back into his hand. That's a nice athletic move for a big man like that. And he is a big man. 6'3, 325 pounds. Third down at 12. They swing it to Julius Jones. And he's run out of bounds. At the 25 yard line, three and out for Seattle. So their struggles continue in the opening quarter. And we talked about how they need to find some vertical plays down the field. It's a big part of what they're supposed to be able to do. But they're not a very explosive team for a team that stresses as much. They're they're the second half or the second division so to speak in terms of generating big plays. They haven't taken a shot down the field yet. Good punt. My what a punt by John Ryan and a fair catch single for the 27 by Nelson. 
So these folks came prepared for the frigid air at Lambeau Field, and their Packers in front by a touchdown. Two thirty-eight to play in the opening quarter from Green Bay. A belated Merry Christmas to all of you. Hoping you're having a wonderful holiday season and an early Happy New Year. You and I will be spending New Year's in the Big Easy as our BCS Bowl Bash will kick off here on Fox. Play action one way, rolling the other is Rodgers, and it's incomplete. Somewhat sloppy throw there by Rodgers with an eye on Corey Hall. Well, I think he changed his mind at the last minute. He saw Donald Lee coming across the field, and at the last minute decided, no, I don't want to throw it there. And, and I think it, it caught the running back off guard that the ball actually came out to him. So right now, I tell you what, for a team that starts fast, these Green Bay Packers don't have a lot of fluidity to them right now. They just don't seem in sync. Ryan Grant had not much there. So another third and long for Rodgers and the Packers. Deion Grant coming up to make the tackle. Ran his 10th season out of Tennessee. Has started all 48 games since signing with Seattle as a free agent in 2007. A lot of bodies moving. Well, Aaron Rodgers is working them. That's twice now, if indeed this holds up and this is against Seattle. We'll see whether they were enticed or whether they jumped off sides. Encroachment, number 94, defense. Five yard penalty, still third down. But you can see Aaron Rodgers is working the snap count here. Particularly out of the gun. They heard or saw something. No one flinched. They're going strictly off the snap count. So Aaron Rodgers must be working multiple counts, particularly out of the gun. And you can do that when you're at home to see if you can draw off this pass rush of the Seattle Seahawks. So third and nine becomes third and four. Four man rush. Rodgers looking for the home run ball. And he's got it to Greg Jennings. That's just a great this this is quite a call on third and four. And now you can see in here he waits. This is timing. This is timing. Looks off the receiver or looks off the free safety to one. And this is just that 40 and five relationship we talk about. Great job by Jennings keeping uh, the defender on his inside shoulder giving himself room to fade away to the catch. That's a beautifully executed fade away deep ball. So over a thousand yards again Greg Jennings on the season timeout is called by Seattle. That is the 16th completion this season of 40 yards or more by Aaron Rodgers. We take a peek ahead to the final weekend of the NFL on Fox early Eagles and Cowboys Giants and Vikings Bears and Lions. You and I will see the Saints and the Panthers. The Packers scheduled to play in Arizona. The Redskins in San Diego. The built for tough Fox NFL Sunday pregame show begins at noon Eastern 9 a.m. Pacific. And just to let you know some of those start times could change looking ahead to next week. Well, you look at these numbers here, you can see why the Green Bay Packers are so excited about Aaron Rodgers. That puts it in context right there. Not a lot of folks have done that. First player in NFL history to throw for over 4,000 yards in that capacity. Aaron Rodgers having a heck of a two seasons. It is indeed. First two seasons in the league. Had all the pressure of replacing Brett Favre here a season ago. They go right back to Jennings. And he's inside the five. Broke the initial tackle of Trufant, and then lots of daylight. Just a great one step out here now. He's going to one step and come back, 
And if you can make a guy miss in the open field, usually those types of plays don't yield a lot because the DB is able to come up and make the tackle. But that's an excellent move. Gets him down inside the five yard line. You can see he's excited about that. He loves, that's as easy a catch as you're going to ever make. So from the three. Spencer Hayden in motion. They give it to Grant. And he leaps. Very close to the pile on. Did the ball break the plane? It is a touchdown. And the key is obviously as he reaches out here with the ball, is his body in the field to play? And does the ball cross the pylon or cross the goal line? Absolutely. All the elements there for a touchdown by Green Bay. Well, here we are again. Seattle, all their struggles, as you talked about, Brian Billick in the opening quarter. And a point after away from trailing 14 nothing. And you could tell the frustration in the Seattle's uh, the players and the coaches voice because it's like we don't know how we keep ending up in this situation. Crosby out of the hold of Kapanos who took over in that role last week. Ryan Grant his ninth rushing touchdown of the season. You know, we talk about Aaron Rodgers and last year the Packers six and ten lost so many close games and you know when you're the quarterback you, know, you get a lot of the credit when things are good you take a lot of the heat when they're not you further compound the fact that you're replacing perhaps the all time greatest Packer of them all in Brett Favre and you look at their numbers this year almost identical. Well you've got to give a great deal of credit to general manager Ted Thompson and Mike McCarthy they got a lot of grief when this whole thing with the Brett Favre went down and you can see they had conviction they believe they had their quarterback of the future of Aaron Rodgers they let a future Hall of Famer leave and that's a hard thing to do the, the other part of that equation in dishing him off to the New York Jets they picked up an extra pick that turned out to be Clay Matthews so you've got to give them credit now no okay You've got yourself an outstanding young quarterback that's going to be here for a long, long time. We picked up an extra pick and a great outside linebacker who's going to be with us for a long, long time. you got to give credit to Ted Thompson and Mike McCarthy for their willingness to stick with their convictions and make the changes they knew they had to make. Rodgers on that drive, 2 of 3, 64 yards. And a bouncer is picked up by Lewis Rankin at the 15. And he has stopped at the 25 yard line. And that's where the Seahawks will put it in play. Like to remind you, Friday, Fox once again brings you the greatest week in college football beginning New Year's Day with the All State Sugar Bowl, ATT Cotton Bowl, Monday, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, and finally, the FedEx Orange Bowl. It begins on Fox Friday night in high definition. And of course, the stunning news in the entire sports world yesterday. Florida coach Urban Meyer will step down after the Sugar Bowl against his alma mater Cincinnati. But we certainly hope that Urban Meyer from a health standpoint is OK. There's a completion made to Dion Branch out to the 43 yard line. Apparently that's why coach Meyer is stepping down and we certainly send our thoughts and prayers to him that he's all right. Yeah, we certainly hope so. We're going to be fascinating to visit with him when we get to New Orleans. I'm looking forward to it. Back after these messages from your local Fox station. Seattle with a football set to begin the second quarter here at Lambeau Field. Great to have you with us. Packers in front 14 nothing and certainly keeping an eye on developments in the Meadowlands where Carolina's added a touchdown to go ahead of the Giants 10 nothing. And again, for those of you joining us, a Green Bay win, a giant loss, and the Packers are in the playoffs. Incomplete on first down, heavy pressure by Clay Matthews. Let's check in again from L.A. with Kurt Menefee. Well, the Giants trying to keep their playoff hopes alive. Carolina continues to be spoilers. They beat Minnesota Sunday night. Now Jonathan Stewart's 29-yard run puts them up 10-0 on the Giants. Of course, a giant loss and Packer win. Packers punch a playoff spot. Tom? Kurt, thank you very much. Flags come down. And a second down carry by Justin Forsett. 
You know, you and I were talking, Brian, before the game today, and Kurt just mentioned a moment ago, that Carolina Panther team, John Fox has had such an outstanding run there, but has come under heavy heat this season for what has been a disappointing year. But I tell you what, they lay it on the line each and every week. It doesn't matter what their record is. They continue to play hard. Yeah, they do. And they are a physical team that regardless of whether they're in a playoff hunt or not. Illegal motion, 84 offense. That penalty's declined. Third down. You know, and, and, and in, the, in this league, it's what have you done for me lately? But John Fox has done a great job in Carolina. And, and like a lot of teams, it's kind of good one year and you fall off the next. But they do come ready to play. They beat a very good Minnesota Viking team. And right now they're up on a New York Giant team that's fighting for its playoff life. And the penalty against Hushman Zada. And now a throw to Hushman Zada. And he's got it for a first down. Banged out of bounds at the 27 yard line. Nice throw by Matt Hasselbeck. It was. You're going to see a double move here. Hushman Zada down here at the bottom. Little subtle double move. Just a, uh, a stab to the, to the uh, slant. And then nice fall away catch to the outside. That's the kind of big play we alluded to earlier. They're going to need a bunch of those to get back in this ball game. Hushman Zada, 73rd reception of the year. And on first down, they give it to Forsett with daylight. And still on his feet, another first down to the 12-yard line. And this is what Forsett gives them. He's averaging better than five yards a carry. He's very quick. And he's very quick. You can see right here coming up. Watch the way he can make a move and then jump step right back into the play. And it's got a little bit of burst about it. So a great one two punch with Forsett and Jones. Forsett remains in there. Play action. He gets the football. And he picks up a couple of yards down to the 10. Met by Brandon Chiller. A balmy 20. That was in the first quarter. And we're really starting to warm up. Oh, yeah. It's the humidity hot. on the rise. It's getting hot in this booth. I can't feel my feet. Second and seven. They give it to four set. And flags come down on the field. Big Johnny Jolly again on the tackle. Well, Jolly's a nice player. This entire defensive front has played well for Green Bay. Illegal formation, number 83, offense. He covered up the tight end. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Now you talk about Jolly. Ryan Pickett has been their regular at nose. B.J. Raji, you mentioned him, coach, and Cullen Jenkins. I mean, that quartet. Really about as good as any 3-4 up front of any team in the league. It does, and they base it out of the 3-4, and you throw in the linebackers, a Hawk, Barnett, Matthews, the young man, Brad Jones, that come in for Catman. This is a good, solid front seven. John Carlson, the tight end, split far to the left. And on second down, Hasselbeck steps up, and he will run it in slides at the eight-yard line. Huge interception thrown by Hasselbeck on a pretty impressive drive for Seattle to start the game. It led to a touchdown. Aaron Rodgers, a touchdown pass, and Ryan Grant, a touchdown run for Green Bay. Third and six. That ball was tipped, and it's intercepted. It appeared tipped at the line of scrimmage, and Atari Bigby picks it off. Right now, Matt Hasselbeck's wondering, what can I do? He had a seam, had a guy in the end zone, but as he goes to deliver, the ball gets tipped and, learned, and leads to the second turnover in the first half. A big turnover right there by Seattle. Knock it on the door inside the 10. A tip pass into the arms of Atari Bigby. His second interception of the year, and Green Bay with the ball at its own 20. Ryan 
Grant wrapped up by Will Herring. Double whammy. First, you're going to see the ball tipped by Jolly. So Matt Hasselbeck got his eyes on what he wants to do. It gets tipped. And then you come back and you can see here, Hushman Zada slips at the top. Bigby then allowing to step in with just a bit of the redirection of the tip ball, a one-two punch that leads to Matt Hasselbeck's second interception. Action. Rogers steps up looking for Jennings again. And good coverage. A time by Josh Wilson. DB, I know the fans here <coughs> calling for a pass interference. Josh Wilson playing very well, keeping his eye on the ball. You know, and this is one of the things that the uh, NFL is looking at. These big penalties down the field, this huge change, those 40 yard penalties, and talking with Mike Pereira last week it's something they're looking at as to whether they separate intentional pass interference which would be the big penalty the spot foul versus a smaller incidental contact for 15 yards certainly something the league's going to look at one of the distinct differences between the pro game and a college game pass interference is a 15 yard penalty Rodgers under heavy pressure throws it away so the Packers will punt Daryl Tapp was chasing Aaron Rodgers and those two were locked up in a rather interesting story this week where Aaron Rodgers said Daryl Tapp bit him in a game last year. Tapp said that's absolutely ridiculous. Now we talked to Aaron yesterday he said you know I wish I hadn't have brought it up. He said but I am going to talk to him before the game tomorrow meaning today saying look how in the world are you denying that this happened. Well sometimes that gets into a he said she said type of deal. Line drive punt and a fair catch of the 38 by Forsett. Aaron Rodgers may be dinged up on that sideline. We'll check it out. Here we're, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're going to see here Aaron Rodgers uh, that as he rolls out, uh, doesn't necessarily get tangled up. He just hits the ground hard. And again, I know the frozen tundra's got a lot of coils underneath it, but it's still a hard ground. Takes a little bit of a shot on his hip or shoulder. Aaron Rodgers has been hit three, four times in this game. It's those cumulative hits that worry you as a coach, even if it doesn't lead to a sack. Well, Seattle, good field position in its own 38-yard line, trailing 14-0. And Hassel back to throw on first down across the middle. Through the arms of Dion Butler. Looked like a catch it should have been made. We talked about the incident involving Tap and Rodgers last year. Down at the bottom of the pile is where Aaron Rodgers said he was bit on the left arm. It never came up in the game that day in the press conference afterward or in subsequent interviews with Aaron Rodgers. And all of a sudden, it came up this week, a year later. Ball start, left tackle, offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Now, this is the third time in, uh, that, that the Seattle Seahawks have been caught with either a procedure or a misalignment offensively. It's got to concern you a little bit. It's not like the crowd, you know, we're, we're pretty bundled up here. It's not like the crowd noise is a huge factor right now. The focus of the Seattle Seahawks, they keep putting themselves into a bit of a hole. Second down and 15, they give it to Julius Jones. And he's to the 35, a third down and 13 upcoming. And again, let's check in back in Los Angeles with Kurt Menefee. And Moore smiles along that Packers sideline, not only because they have the lead, but because Matt Moore hooks up with Hussein Muhammad for a touchdown, 22 yards on the score. Carolina now leads the Giants 17-0. And as you know, Tom, a Carolina victory, meaning a Giant loss, plus a Packer victory, and Green Bay clinches a playoff spot. And they certainly know that here in the state of Wisconsin. Third and 13. Good protection and a good throw by Hasselbeck. And that's caught by the rookie out of Penn State, Dion Butler, in midfield, a first down. Well, one of the change-up looks of the Green Bay Packers, this is just a three-man rush coming at 
Matt Hasselbeck allowing him enough time to wait out the receivers to get the big conversion down the field. Seattle hurries up to the line of scrimmage and may have caught Green Bay with too many players on the field. Flag down, a free play, and a good free play for Seattle to the 32. This penalty will be against the Packers. So that play will stand. Well, you got the sense in talking to them that they were going to do a bit of this because they were concerned about the substitution packages of Dom Capers and the Green Bay Packers and one way to negate that to change the multiple coverages and fronts that you get from this Dom Capers defense is to go no huddle at the very least keep the pace that Matt Hasselback is known for. Not sure what the official trying to sort out here. You know part of the deal is when you rotate personnel offensively you have to give the defense time to adjust and they may have had a substitution package that they're questioning whether that was allowed or not or whether Green Bay had adequate time to make that substitution. Well they're still talking about it. Greg Knapp hoping this thing holds up because they've got a little bit of life for Seattle with those couple of those plays. Let's see what uh, Walt Coleman has for on us. the field on the defense. That penalty is Klein. Second down. And again, you can see you can see right here. There's just a whole there's just a whole bunch of folk, folks. And now did A.J. Hawk and I can't see the others, but a whole bunch of people trying to get off the field as Seattle was trying to run people onto the field. Empty backfield on first down for Seattle at the Green Bay 33. Pump fake. And then up top. That just made by Dion Branch and that's another first down of the Green Bay 15. Same type of throw we just saw just that pump that double move we saw earlier to Hushman Zada here branch does the same thing stutter gets to the outside same type of throw for the big play down the field. Play blown dead before it ever got started. I believe we may have a challenge from Mike McCarthy on the Green Bay sideline about whether or not Branch had both feet in bounds when he made that reception a moment ago. There's no foul on the play. We have a challenge. Green Bay is challenging the ruling on the field of completed catch at well, the sideline. Clearly had control. We'll see here if the ball comes in. He's got the left foot. That looks like that right foot. Boy, we're going to have to see. Uh, he's going to have to have a better view than that to overturn that. We did not have a clear look right there. We'll see about when we come back. Well, we've got a second view. Mike After McCarthy. After reviewing the play, the, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The receiver had two feet down with possession of the ball. Green Bay will be charged with their first team timeout. I think when we see this second review, you'll see it's the right call because as he comes in here, right here, he ends a stop right there. He ends up getting that toe tap. He gets both feet in bounds. The next step was out of bounds, but he already established himself in bounds. Good call by the official. And now that gives Seattle a chance inside the 20 yard line to see if they can get back into this game. A great work by our crew to pick up that toe tap by Dion Branch. And Matt Hasselbeck. On that completion becomes the all time franchise leader in passing yards. He already surpassed Dave Craig this year in attempts and completions. And now number one in the passing yards category. First down carry by Jones tackled by B.J. Raji but another penalty flag comes in. If it's against Seattle it's their seventh. 75 offense 10 yard penalty. Field first down. Wow. Seven penalties, and we have over nine minutes left 
in the first half for Jim Morris team. And this is typical of what has killed Seattle. It's no one thing, no one player. You can play the entire game, 65 plays. Locklear in this instance, well, only had one holding penalty, but then it's the next guy, the next guy, the next guy, and all of a sudden you got seven, eight, nine, ten penalties. The first and ten of the 16 goes to first and 20 at the 26. Blitz coming, and they drop it off to the tight end Carlson. His first catch today, and he spins his way inside the 20, close to the original line of scrimmage. Carolina piling it on the Giants. 24 to nothing midway through the second quarter in the Meadowlands. Wow. Yeah, and in the Meadowlands, as you said, that's that's a bit of a shocker right there. Short drop, slant. Catch made by Branch, a couple of yards shy of a first down. Again, let's check in with Kurt Menefee. Jimmy Johnson's grabbing his fourth. Eli Manning throws a pick to Richard Marshall. And Carolina turns it into more points. Matt Moore hooking up on a two-yard touchdown to the tight end Jeff King. It's 24-0 in the first half. Carolina on top of the Giants. Tom and Brian. And again, you give a lot of credit to John Fox and the Panthers. Third down and a yard. And what a play again made by Johnny Jolly. And Seattle is forced into a field goal try. And you always want to come away with points, but, but I'm not sure that a Seattle Seahawks team at this point doesn't need to capitalize on this field position. But they're going to be settled. They're going to settle with the three points and, and see if they can uh, get back in this game on the next drive. Orlando Mare hit 18 consecutive field goals. And make it 19. <laughs> 14 to 3 following the field goal by Mare. We said he'd hit on 19 in a row, and that is a new Seattle franchise record. He has been one of the very few bright spots for this Seattle team this season. There's a place to be, Brian Billick. I thought you had pulled to get one of those up here in the booth. Yeah, we'd need a lot, one bigger than that. <laughs> That'd be fine for me, but you're still going to be cold. <laughs> Short kick by Mare. Jordy Nelson from the nine yard line. And Nelson's still on his feet. Up to the 33. Well, weekdays, you make lunchtime your new primetime. FoxSports.com brings you lunch with benefits. You log on and check out new episodes of original sports shows delivered online every Monday through Friday at 1 Eastern. Tuesday, Coach Speak with none other than Mr. Brian Billick. And this week's topic, identifying the middle linebacker. Yeah, referred to as the Mike linebacker. You're going to see here Aaron Rodgers and Matt Hasselbeck pointing out the inside backer. That's what he's doing. He's identifying the mic so that it dictates the protections or the run schemes. Play fake to Grant. Rodgers looking down the field for Greg Jennings. Slightly overthrown into double coverage. And it looks like one of the defenders is down on the play. That's Josh Wilson. So while the Seattle medical staff has a look at Wilson, we'll step aside. 14-3, Packers in front. Double whammy on Josh Wilson as he comes in. You're going to see as he goes up into the air. First, he kind of jolts the knee a little bit. I'm not sure that's the case, but I want you to watch how hard he comes down on his hip right there. Really banged it, and I think that's probably what he's feeling right now. Wilson trying to move around on that Seattle sideline. And handed off on second and ten to Grant, and Herring steps into the hole and stuffs him after a two-yard gain. 
Kelly Jennings a starter early in the year when Trufant was hurt replaces the injured Josh Wilson. Trufant was on PUP for the first seven games so they do have some experience here with Jennings to come in for Josh Wilson. Seattle's playing pretty well I tell you what uh, Green Bay has yet to get into any real rhythm offensively even though they're up 14 to 3. Third and eight. Rodgers flush from the pocket. Looks he's a leading rusher among all quarterbacks in the NFL. And picks up a first down, tiptoeing out of bounds at the 45. I mean, you don't talk about that much when you talk about quarterback play, but you know, when you're the leading rusher among all quarterbacks in the NFL, that's something to add to the it resume. Not, not an elite rushing no. group, but and here's the amazing thing. We've talked about it before, Tom. He fell in the draft because supposedly he wasn't a good enough athlete coming out of Cal. He always has a little smirk on his face when you talk about this because now he's known for an athletic quarterback that can move around. Ryan Grant is off to the end zone. Touchdown. A 56 yard touchdown burst from Ryan Grant. Ryan Grant's not known for his big explosive plays, but he's had one in each of now. This is the third game that we've had of the Green Bay Packers, and he's launched one off in each of those three games. So this is the kind of impact in the running game that Mike McCarthy was hoping for. They had a 61 yard touchdown run the first play from scrimmage against Chicago a 24 yard touchdown run against the Steelers and now 56 big ones to go up 21 to 3. You can see he just gets into the body of the line and it's we've talked about it many times you bring those extra people down into the box and if you don't take care of your gaps and have gap integrity you end up putting a whole bunch of folks in behind the running back and Aaron Rodgers I tell you what he knows exactly Aaron Grant and Grant into that second level Aaron Rodgers loves this because he knows it's going to pay dividends for him off play action fakes and the ability to get the ball down the field in the passing game as well still 536 to play until halftime and we have learned from the Seattle sideline it is the hip of Josh Wilson that he injured on that first play of that possession and his return is questionable. Yeah they, uh, this right now I'm not sure they're going to give him back. I don't know if we're going to get uh, Ryan Grant back because that crowd doesn't want to let go of him. All part of the lure here in Lambeau Field the Lambeau Leap. Well it really is unbelievably unique. Really anywhere in professional sports as for set brings it out to the 30 27 yard line and a flag comes in late may have been a face mask at the end of that play. You're talking about a city with barely over a hundred thousand personal foul, face mask 33 kicking team 15 yard penalty from the end of the play first down a little over a hundred thousand as far as population is concerned in Green Bay I mean there could be for professional sports for a billion years and no city this size would ever be awarded any franchise in any sport. Here you can see just a little pull of the face mask a little bit head bob the officials going to call that it every time. Obviously much needed field position for the Seattle Seahawks. Brandon Underwood the rookie out of Cincinnati. And before Hasselbeck even turned around, he was under heavy heat from Brad Jones. It's been pretty ugly for the Seahawks again. Two interceptions by Hasselbeck, a critical one on a on a good drive, their first drive of the game. And they've hit a couple big plays to the outside, to Branch and to uh, Hushmanzada, 
And I'm afraid they're going to need more of that. I'm not sure you're not getting now down 21 3 to the point of the game, even though it's in the second quarter. Maybe fold up the game plan and just start having at it now. Or set out to the 46 yard line. Or Seattle coming off a, an embarrassing loss against Tampa Bay. Ironically, that was the loss that got Green Bay turned around after falling to the Buccaneers, ripping off five in a row thereafter. And it was tough. Jim Moore challenged his team after a tough 34 7 loss to Houston, only to come back and fall to Tampa Bay 24 7. Third and six. Hasselbeck hit as he throws. And some jawing going on down there. Nick Barnett with one of the offensive linemen. I don't know if it started with Hasselbeck and one of his teammates came in his defense. It looked like Barnett had Hasselbeck down around the knee. Well, he got him at the waist. Now they're kind of tied up here, but right here at the bottom. That just little oh. kick by Hasselbeck right there. And Locklear, both of them. Yeah, both both started in on it. Uh, I'm surprised with some of the pushing and shoving and the shots there, there wasn't a flag thrown. I mean, Barnett had him around the waist and pretty much let him go once his arms slid down around Hasselbeck's knee. That one rolls into the end zone, so it's 4.38 to play until halftime, 4.37. And two timeouts. Green Bay gets one more crack at him. Well, and, and you know, people look at time of possession a great deal, Tom. And you know, I don't that's know important. why. Well, Every game we do, it doesn't mean a thing. But it's only time of possession if time of possession leads to points, and it hasn't. When you have turnovers, when you're not able to take advantage, and here clearly the turnovers by Seattle a big factor in it. But you're right. Possession in and of itself is useless. People make too big a deal of it. It only if it, it, it accounts for points that. The two can be related. Otherwise, it's you know you don't get any points for just holding on to the, to the ball more than in your opponent. Well, they're running on first down. A Bon Green, the Packers' all-time leading rusher, gets his first carry of the afternoon. Was signed in uh, late October. Was a Bon Green. And then pass Jim Taylor for most rushing attempts. And finally passing Jim Taylor for most rushing yards. He was an impressive back when he was here and playing well for the Packers. And I know it, they were a comfort zone for them having him here as someone that can come in for Ryan Grant or God forbid if there were an injury. Lay it off out of the backfield to Corey Hall. He's hit hard out at the 29 yard line a yard shy of a first down. And I expect from Mike McCarthy we're going to see a very even handed approach. You'd love nothing more than to finish off this half not give it back to Seattle. Good balance running pass not that I wouldn't take a big shot down the field for a score. I'll take a score any count I can but 21 to 3 to show the kind of balance that we're going to continue to want to have as we make this playoff run particularly with New York down and up and now Green Bay up 21 to 3. Well they pitch it to Amon Green and he spins off a hard hit and has a first down and more. Amon Green all the way out to the 45 yard line. This is just good hard running by Amon Green. I mean, it's a well designed play, and they're going to get off the right side here. Just going to work in a zone play. Then he's going to end up cutting it back. And, and not so much as a cut as just staying alive as he comes in here. Good contact. No one's wrapping up. Everybody's trying to get a knockout punch here. No one's wrapping up on the big back. Just good physical, good pad level, kind of physical, kind of running game you love to have, particularly if you're the Green Bay Packers. Quick throw by Rodgers to Donald Driver, and he's to the Seattle 48-yard line. 
Now will the Packers let it run down to the two minute warning it appears they will as Rodgers makes his way to the sideline. And we've just seen on that last play you get the running game cranked up now all of a sudden you can play action off it just like we saw the last play opens up a whole world for the Green Bay Packers two minute warning Packers on the move already leading Seattle twenty one to three. Look at some of the leaders offensively for Green Bay. Not a great game for Rodgers by any stretch of the imagination. Ryan Grant already 73 yards rushing and has one more rushing attempt in this half than he had in the entire game against the Steelers last weekend. Second and three. Rodgers throws in complete to Jermichael Finley. We've not heard from him today. I think Rodgers expected to be Finley, maybe a yard one way than where he turned out. And you're going to see Finley. Finley's all the way in here, and he expected him to break, I think, not turn so far out. See, he jumped to the outside. I think he expected him to just spin and sit into the hole, and that's the kind of thing that a, a veteran like Aaron Rodgers would get his coach, his young tight end, up to do. Five receivers set on third down, wide open down the middle of the field is Jennings, inside the 20, and all the way down to the 10 yard line. Nice. Nice sleight of hand there. You're going to see Jennings on the outside here, and they bring Finley now down in here, who they've gone to a couple times, comes right in behind him in that little void that he creates by going to the flat. It's amazing how many of the big plays the Packers get on little throws like that. They're one of the more vertical teams in the league, but they don't throw the ball down the field as much as you would think, given their numbers. A lot of them are those 10 and 12 yard catches that go for 20, 30, 40 yards. A hundred yard receiving day again for Jennings. Rodgers throws it away. Of course, Jennings last week against the Steelers caught a career long 83 yard touchdown pass. It was also the longest completion in Aaron Rodgers' career. Well, you talk about a big play guy. Jennings has scored 28 touchdowns. 13 of them have gone for 40 yards or more. And as I said, a lot of them aren't necessarily the big plays down the field. It's like you're saying. They make a ton of yardage off of intermediate passes that turn into explosive plays. Finley in motion. They give it to Amon Green. And that did not fool Mr. Darrell Tack. Watt ticking down under 50 seconds. And a third down upcoming for Green Bay. Well, the Packers are ninth in the league in explosive plays. Those are plays as the league measures of 20 yards or more. They've got 59 of them. They've already got four. If you can get five or six a game, if you were to average that, you'd lead the league in explosive plays, which we've talked about many times, is one of the major determinants for success in this league. Brian, with two timeouts, why wouldn't they have spent one of these timeouts and run one more play on third down? Yeah, I'm not sure why, other than than uh, sometimes what you do is some people opt to take either a field goal attempt on third down in case there's a missed snap, gives you the opportunity to still then call timeout and take a second shot. Uh, here it depends on what they want to do with it. I'm not quite sure why they would bring it down that far than now to attempt to play. You can control the clock. In, uh, I'm not sure other than if they don't try a field goal right here, I don't understand it. If they do, then that's what they're doing it for. They want to give themselves the latitude that if there's a, a problem on the snap that you get a chance to take it again. But it looks like Aaron uh, Rodgers is back in the game. Uh, I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I don't know why you would bring the clock down and stop it at that point. I mean they had 50 seconds left in the half. You've got one timeout left so you, again you don't want to have to get turn the ball over to your opponent to take one shot. I still have the latitude to throw the ball underneath if I want with one timeout. Ah! 
Four-man rush. And it was third and goal. The catch is made down at the two-yard line by Jermichael Finley. All right. They spent a timeout. Would you go for it here with eight seconds left? You're already ahead. 21 to 3. Sure, why not? And I think you can see Aaron Rodgers. He turned to Mike McCarthy kind of to say, hey, what the heck? Let's go. Kind of threw his hands up, said, we're down here. We're up 21 to 3. Let's go ahead and send a statement. Let's take a shot here. At this point, you're kind of wishing you hadn't let the clock come down and use that timeout at 15 seconds, which is still a head scratcher to me. Looks like they're talking about it. They're going to go for it here. Now, with eight seconds, you do have time for one shot to the end zone since you're down on the one yard line. You pretty much have to throw it because you're out of timeouts. You don't have time to run your field goal team on. Well, it's a fourth down. Well, they are going for it. I thought this converted for him inside. This is fourth down. This is an all or nothing shot here. So in that case, yeah, you can run it or throw it here. It makes no difference. So at the one yard line, Spencer Haydner. An extra tight end checks in, so a three tight end formation fake. You said it, play action fake. Rodgers throws. Hayden, touchdown. Penalty flag came in from the back of the end zone. What an unbelievable story Havener has been. A decorated linebacker at UCLA has spent three years. Pass interference, number 41. Offense, 10 yard penalty. Still fourth down. Starting to say he spent three years on the practice squad. Well, well, he might linebacker. be back on the practice he's squad. He's a linebacker. He could. He thought he was on the wrong side of the ball. So they go for it, but the penalty negates a touchdown. Nice job by the fullback taking down the rush of the outside defender. I think that was a DB taking him out at the knees. Great execution. Havner got so. Or Havener, excuse me, got so wide open because evidently he pushed off on somebody. Well, now after the penalty, Mason Crosby comes on for a 24-yard field goal try and bangs it through. Havener has been under enormous heat here in Green Bay for misses over the last month. Just fighting his way out here, kind of pushes off. I don't know, kind of pedestrian. But by the same token, had his hands on him, extended the hands. Fox NFL Sunday continues with the Visa Halftime Report. After these messages and a word from your local Fox station. New Year to all of you. Wyatt Anderson from right here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. He found out we were doing this game this weekend, and coach, it's Wyatt's first Christmas Day at home in over a decade. Wow. Wow. So we're Glad very happy for him and his family. I don't mind being get stuck in the airport for 15 hours then if he gets to be home for Christmas. Hey, you had a long day yesterday. Oh boy, it was. Mason Crosby. Puts a foot on it to begin the second half, and Justin Forsett still on his feet and run out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Well, Brian Billick, I trust you and your family had a very merry Christmas, and here we are back to football. And of course, for the Green Bay Packers, knowing that Carolina is in front of the Giants, 31 to nothing, that game in the third quarter. Green Bay in front 24 3 try to nail down that playoff spot. Yeah and you that's going to test your focus here in the second half you're in complete control of the game. 
you know that where it's going to lead to, particularly with the Giants score, looking to see how his troops are going to finish off. I'm talking about McCarthy now, how his troops are going to finish off with the second half, keeping that focus and passion high. Julius Jones lost a yard on first down. Numbers from the first half, clearly in Green Bay's favor. Those two turnovers really hurt Seattle. Yeah, and it obviously put them on a short field. And Green Bay finished strong, obviously, with that last drive. Seattle's got to do something here. They got to they got to get some energy going, see if they can get themselves back in this game to keep their energy up. Looked like the ball was tipped coming out of the hand of Hasselbeck. And the rookie Dion Butler had it momentarily. Are they saying he caught the pass or incomplete? Incomplete. Yeah, I think they're saying you can see here as the ball comes in, the ball's going to bounce. It's just enough behind him, catches enough of the turf, rolls back into it. I don't know if he had his hand underneath it. Certainly don't know if it's worth a challenge for the amount of the game. Going to put Seattle now in a third and long. Clear down at 11. This is not a strength of the Seattle Seahawks. They're 26 in the league in third down conversion. Four man rush. And it's intercepted for the third time today. This time by Jared Bush. I'm not sure Matt Hasselback didn't think the receiver was going to flatten a little bit there. We'll take a look at it when we come back. Clay Matthews hit him as he cut it loose. Both quarterbacks have been under a lot of pressure in this game today, especially Matt Hasselbeck. Hit as he threw there a moment ago, and that pass turned into his third interception of the game. First possession for Green Bay in the second half, and Ryan Grant for a couple of yards. Well, two components. First, you're going to see Clay Matthews coming off the edge here, really putting pressure on Matt Hasselbeck. And then I thought maybe the receiver flattened off, but this is just a great, this is just a great play by Jared Bush. Watch the way he transitions, jumps to the inside, rides, sees it's an inside route, turns, and now becomes the receiver. Actually beat Hushmanzada to the punch. Excellent technique by Jared Bush. Of course, Bush allowed three big plays in that loss to Pittsburgh last weekend and heard a lot about it. We asked Mike McCarthy about Jared Bush yesterday, and he said, look, we're asking this guy to do a lot of things right now. There's an incomplete pass. He said he is on every special teams that we have. And because of the injury to Al Harris and some other guys being nicked up, he's in a spot they weren't expecting him to be in this year. But that was a nice play there by Bush. It was, and, and that's a legitimate concern for Coach McCarthy because you're talking about maybe 15, 20 special team snaps on top of the extended defensive duty that he has to because of the injuries that you alluded to. That's just good coaching on Mike McCarthy's part, recognizing the demands on his players. Third down and eight, blitz coming. Rodgers gets it away, Jermichael Finley. Inside the 20, drag down into 17. Nice throw by Aaron Rodgers, letting Jermichael Finley use his size. Not an exactly a back shoulder throw, but let, let him use his body. He's a big receiver. And now doing it again, back on the backside. Anytime they get Jermichael Finley on the backside, they're going to look to see the matchup. Deion Grant, a good DB, but again, the size differential allowing a big receiver like Jermichael Finley to use his body. 28 yard gain on that completion to Finley, and now Grant bangs his way to the 10 yard line. Grant zeroing in on another 100 yard rushing day. See the 11 rushes today for Grant after getting a total of eight carries against the Steelers last week. And that was just that game turned into a track meet. So sometimes it's easy to get away from the run because you know what you have to do to keep up with a very hot offense, which was the case in Pittsburgh. Over, over, over. 
Second down and three. Graham will get it again. And just short of a first down is Ryan Grant, a yard short. You know, oftentimes you'll hear the term, well, he quietly goes about his business. I'm not sure there is a more accurate description of that than Ryan Grant. When you look at some of the running backs around the NFC, to think he has the fourth most rushing yards to me is astounding. And you're right, because not me. You look at the names here, and obviously all recognizable. But uh, you know, you talk to ten, uh, nine out of ten people uh, that are football fans. I don't know they would come up with the name Ryan Grant to go with the others. Third down at two. Brandon Jackson slips a tackle and has a first down to the seven-yard line. Broke the tackle of Leroy Hill. And Aaron Rodgers has proved so effective in two key areas. Third down conversions and red zone efficiency. The ability to not just be effective, efficient I should say, but not turning the ball over in the red zone, which is a huge part of being successful. But those are two critical errors that tell you about the caliber of this young quarterback. Jackson into the end zone. So Jackson has his first receiving touchdown of the year in this game. Now his first rushing touchdown of the season. And this is all Jackson here. You're going to see on the outside he starts one way. And then right here Will Herring's got to recognize he's coming back the other way. But recognizes too late, and that's just all Jackson out running the defense around the edge to get the touchdown. Point after is good. The Packers rolling their way into the NFC playoffs. We we'll see Aaron Rodgers on that scoring drive. Both of those completions came on third down, which you talked about a moment ago, Coach Billick. Well any any time you look at a quarterback you're looking at him how does he perform in critical situations and there's nothing more critical than a third down and in the red zone particularly a third down in the red zone so so a double whammy by Aaron Rodgers there. Very short kick for set from the 15. And he's to the 30 yard line. Packer win and a Giants loss puts Green Bay in the playoffs and both well on their way identical scores. Boy the Giants just getting humiliated by Carolina. Wow. The score now is just going to 34 to 3 Carolina's tacked on a field goal in the third quarter. Blitz coming. They pick it up. Hassel back down the field into traffic. And it's knocked down by Atari Bigby. Matt Hasselbeck just having to throw up a, a wing and a prayer here because now obviously down 31 to 3. And this is now they're going to kick it into a mode where Matt Hasselbeck, and, and he likes the two minute, he likes the open spread offense. And uh, if nothing else, it's okay. Let's get back to doing what I like doing. Let's pitch this thing around. I'm a little surprised they're not in a no huddle. Second and ten. They hand it off to Forsett. And he picks up two. Let's check in with Kurt Menefee back in Los Angeles for a game break. Blowouts going on all over the league, but this one's important because the Patriot win and they clinch the AFC North, or AFC East, pardon me. Randy Moss, three touchdowns, including that one reaching over the goal line, and they lead Jacksonville 35 to nothing. Once again, a win, and they're champions of the East again. Tom and Brian. Again is right. Patriots about to go to 10 and 5. Kurt, thank you very much. High snap on third down. 
That had no chance to be anything but intercepted. Thrown into triple coverage, and Atari Bigby has his second interception of the game. Atari Bigby had one interception all year long. He has two of them today. And Matt Hasselbeck in back-to-back -back games has thrown four interceptions. Quick slant on first down to Greg Jennings. That's a gain of nine. Actually, it starts out pretty good protection. They're going to bring a stunt back here on the backside. Seahawks do a nice job picking up, not under duress, but it's a flat throw down the field. And you can see he's going to too flat, comes out too hot, and Big B, who's in behind it, kind of just gets a freebie. Just be in the right place at the right time. As you say, it's two games in a row, four interceptions. Seattle Seahawks still trying to figure out why it is they're not playing well. Ryan Grant appears to have enough for a first down. You know, in a game often overloaded with statistics, consider this. All four interceptions today thrown by Hasselbeck, all four have been on third down. Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady are the only two quarterbacks in the NFL that have not thrown an interception on third down the entire year. And that that really does come down to focus intent plan uh, has to do with all those things attention to detail right now Seattle a team that's looking for answers and Matt Hasselbeck trying to come up with I'll just make a throw on third down and it's not happening for him. Grant looking for running room cuts it back to the inside. And he picks up close to four. All four interceptions today thrown by Hasselbeck. One in the end zone. Good coverage there by Bush. And then the fourth one a moment ago, second today by Bigby. And, and you like the bravado of, hey, look, we're not going to the playoffs. Let's just let fling this thing around and see what we can do with it. But there's got to be a structure and a plan for it. It can't be half, even fast break basketball has to have structure to it. And, and Matt Hasselback, I don't know what they're accomplishing with this style of play right now. Grant, a gain of close to nine. You know, I found it very interesting in our conversation with Matt Hasselbeck yesterday when he talked about still trying to become more familiar with this offense and how over and over and over and over and over in practice every day they talk about being an explosive offense. And Brian Billick, you brought it up earlier. You know, really, you look at their wide receiving core, you even look at their running back core. And I got to be honest with you. I mean, I have a hard time seeing a lot of explosive players. I'm not saying they don't have good players, but good players and explosive players aren't always the same thing. No, and the two don't always equate. And they've got good, solid receiving core. Here with just, again, a play action fake. And wide open is Jermichael Finley. Still on his feet, all the way down to the floor. They've set this play up all day long. They take Michael, Jer Mike, Jer Michael Finley, excuse me, motion his way back to the slot for blocking purposes. We're clearly at the point in the game where you think you're going to run it. You're going to see him on the excuse me on the edge right here, and now he sneaks out into the route. And it's a perfect play. You're going to run the ball. You're up 31 to three. A play action fake. That's how he ended up behind this, the linebacking core with no one there because they're all over the run. Good play call, particularly given the circumstances of the game. Jackson still on his feet and for the third time today finds the end zone. Twice on the ground, once in the air for Brandon Jackson today. Oh, he gets his Lambeau lead now. This, this is the best part. We hadn't had one all year. Yeah, I know. Uh, and what a, what a great opportunity for a young man. You can tell by this on the smile on his face. He's excited by what's going on today. Third year out of Nebraska. 
he knows what it is to be a big part of a, a big time program and exciting but for him this is something special when you're a young pro like that. Point after good. 38 to 3 Packers in front. A career day for Brandon Jackson. He had two touchdowns in his NFL career, one in each of his first two seasons, both of them rushing the football. Today, three touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns, and his first career receiving score. Rankin out across the 25, up to the 30 yard line. Yeah, this is kind of what I want you to watch right here. He comes out of the huddle now, and he knows he's getting the ball here. He's not a big guy to begin with, and I want you to watch. He's hiding behind Aaron Rodgers. He doesn't even want him to know they're there. It's like, okay, if they don't know I'm here, they can't know I'm going to get the ball. That's uh, that's good gamesmanship by the young Mr. Jackson. Ends up getting a touchdown for himself, and they obviously didn't know he was there. Nice job. That's all part of the game. I love it. I'll hand it off to Julius Jones. Will Matt Hasselbeck on first down, and that's a gain of five for Jones. Brian, uh, going back to your days as an offensive coordinator, and then later a Super Bowl winning head coach. When you're down 38 to three, if you're Jim Mora, and you have almost a quarter and a half left of football, what do you do? play calling wise well they're, they're obviously going with the basic game plan that says let's just get a score let's just try to show that we're a professional football team can get through a series without making a mistake without getting a penalty can convert on third down I mean you never say the game's out of reach but you're down 38 to 3 which would say OK go no huddle throw the ball up but you've tried that and you've thrown four interceptions let's try to look like a professional football team right now and see if we can go the length of the field and score. Well, they get a first down. At their own 40, Hasselbeck out of a shotgun. And the catch is made by Hushman Zada. We should talk about struggles offensively. The Seahawks have scored a single touchdown in each of the last two games. And the Seahawks have not scored a point, period, in the second half of either one of those games. Well, the concerning thing for Seattle uh, it has to be that that when things have not gone well, gone well, we've talked about how the early part of the game has not gone well. They're playing a team that st tends to start fast. When they get beat, they get beat big time. They lost to Tampa 24 to seven, Houston 34 to seven, Minnesota 35 to nine. When it doesn't go well. It, it doesn't go well and they not only get beat they get beat big. Julius Jones with a first down rush. And dropped by Nick Barnett to the 42 yard line. Now they've got a nice drive going here. They're showing the ability to, to kind of sustain things here. Continue to run the ball. They may get a play action fake again to get a big play down the field particularly if you get the running game started to give you that opportunity most big plays come off play action face. Branch the reception still on his feet. And that's a gain of nine on first down for Dion Branch. Of course a year and a half ago nearly two years ago. Dion Branch was injured in a playoff game right here at Lambeau Field. Tore his ACL. And it rolled into the beginning of last year when he missed the first eight games of the season. He's made it all the way back. For set to the open field. And he has a first down to the 22. Now on the flip side of this, Mike McCarthy has to consider OK looks like we're into the playoffs. We've had a great game. We're playing well. But again it's about the finish. We got better than a quarter and two minutes to play. 
how are we going to finish are we going to let our focus we just going to let this thing limp along and finish or are we going to finish strong because there is a carryover into next week and into the playoff Hasselbeck lays it off out of the backfield two four set and he's to the 19 yard line. Matt Hasselback is one that likes a tempo and I think one of the frustrations with their style of play is that it does slow they, they substitute personnel a great deal more than he was used to under Mike Holmberg and that's part of the transition for him into this type of offense. Big old B.J. Raji wraps his arms around Julius Jones and when that big fella gets a hold of you you're not squirting loose. For a big man you're going to see right here in the middle he's got incredible quickness about him here it's just the, the guard moves up I'm not sure he didn't get more of a piece of him than he needed expecting the tackle to step back in and take over the combination block Raji's got great pop and quickness for a big man third and ten blitz Coven Matthews couldn't get there. And the pass is incomplete. Alindo well, Mari looking at Jim Mora, and Jim Mora says, "No, no, 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 no. no We're not, going on fourth down. Not down 38 to three. You got to give your offense a chance to keep it alive." Young Clay Matthews got so excited he went, un, as they say, unabated to the quarterback, and uh, thought he was going to get a freebie here. Jim Moore conversing with the offensive coordinator I'm sure going what exactly we're going to do right here. Eight of 16 on fourth downs this season. Pump fake. And down goes Hasselbeck in the arms of Brandon Chiller. Well Hasselbeck is hot. Chiller's coming from the middle. Now you you pull the ball down. Excuse me. Chiller's over in here. You, he was looking for a double move. It obviously wasn't there. He had to pull it back down, go to the other side, and on a three-step drop, that usually leads to disaster. You don't have that type of time, particularly with the stun on the inside. Look for the double move to start at the top. Was upset. Looked like he was upset with the official. Was looking for some type of pass interference or holding call. And didn't get it. Well, the afternoon is over for Aaron Rodgers with a 38 to 3 lead. They'll give it to Matt Flynn in his second year out of LSU. It was a seventh round draft pick a season ago after leading the Bengal Tigers to a national championship. Well, this is a smart move by Mike McCarthy. Game clearly in control. Rodgers had a good day. Why expose him even though you're going to do nothing but hand the ball off a whole bunch. Why expose him to to any more shots than he has to. So that's the end of the third quarter. Thirty eight to three. Green Bay in front of Seattle Fox NFL Sunday continues after a word from your local Fox station. Well right from the get go it's been all Packers today after that. Very early interception on what was a pretty good looking opening drive for Seattle. And now Matt Flynn will quarterback this final quarter from Lambeau Field in this 2009 regular season. Flynn short drop fires a strike to the far side to Donald Driver. I'll tell you one thing about Flynn and I had a chance to see him in college including that national championship win over Ohio State. This kid's a winner. I mean, I don't know anything about playing quarterback in the NFL. Brian Billick, that's what you know. But well, this kid is a winner. I know to a degree. If I knew better, I wouldn't be up here <laughs> with you. But Mike Flynn, uh, or excuse me, Flynn, uh, uh, Matt Flynn, this is valuable time, Tom. This, this gives this young man a chance to actually play and get some experience. Oh, 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 what a You know you, you hate to say it and you never want it to happen you pray it doesn't happen but as you know as well as anybody I mean that starting quarterback is one play away from handing over 
Things to the backup quarterback. And this type of time you can't be had any place else. You can only get so much done in practice. And these are live snaps against a NFL defense that Matt Flynn is going to gain from. He'll probably make four or five throws over the course of this quarter. And those are four or five throws that he wouldn't have otherwise had. You're right. Nothing, uh, nothing worse than losing your quarterback. But you've got to develop that backup at the same time. Flynn had hit on two of three passes the entire year before throwing that completion to Driver. And now he's looking for the big one to Donald Driver. And it's incomplete. This pass is complete to Driver. by you know we talked about Tom that Green Bay going into the playoffs wants to get the running game cranked up and and here you can see good day today by Ryan Grant and Brandon Jackson a commitment and the game allowed them to do this clearly but with the young or the talented receiving core that they have as they go into the playoffs if they can continue to get this kind of balance this Green Bay Packer team will be as dangerous as any team there is in the playoffs. Not sure they got that one off before the play clock expired. Full start, number 65, offense, five yard penalty, still third down. Now, Brian, I got to ask you a question here about uh, the comment you just made and, and the ability to run the football. When last week they pretty much said, we don't even know what running the football is in a game against the Steelers. And they rack up the big points, the big yards, but the bottom line is they get beat in a shootout because by throwing the ball all the time and all the big plays, they couldn't keep Pittsburgh's offense off the field. But they can throw the ball as well as anybody in the league. And if you can add a balanced running game to it in the right circumstance, it's an asset. The league has changed, there's no question. Flynn escapes trouble. And a first down catch by Jordy Nelson to the 43-yard line. That's a nice play by Matt Flynn. Didn't force the ball in, showed some athleticism getting out of the pocket. You can see here it begins to collapse around them. They're just going to bring in the rush from the outside from all quarters. Recognizes things are going to break down, flushes up and outside, keeps his vision down the field. And now this is just a matter of keeping the play alive. He recognizes his quarterback's in trouble. Keep moving, keep moving. Now come back and give him a target. Nice job by Jordy Nelson. Nice execution of a play by two guys that don't have a lot of time on the field together at the same time. Amon Green, a first down carry inside the 40 to the 38 yard line. You know, we've talked about it before, Tom. This is a young football team, and it's got to have, again, we talked about the job that Ted Thompson and Mike McCarthy have done. Look at and these these are good football Aaron Rodgers playing as well as anybody in the game Jennings the young emerging tight end in Finley. We've already talked about the unheralded Ryan Grant. Uh, these guys are very they're going to be together for a long time. So the Green Bay Packers have every expectation to be a playoff team not only this year but in the foreseeable future for a good long time. Amon Green again is wrapped up by Colin Cole, the former Packer. I mean, it's four years running. They've been among the youngest, if not the youngest, team in the National Football League. Well, and this you can see here uh, where they ranked. It goes back to our conversation when they made, they made the decision to go with Aaron Rodgers and let Brett Favre leave the organization. They knew the course they were on. They knew how young a team they were and what they were building for for the future. Packers 8 of 12 on third down today. This is third and four. Flynn to Brandon Jackson. And he's very close to a first down depending on the spot. And I'm not sure you don't go for it here. And you know no, in our conversation just... with Mike McCarthy yesterday he said look we asked him about his kicker. In Mason Crosby at a 34 yard miss against Pittsburgh last week. He's missed a kick in four straight games in seven of the last eight games. He said look I believe in this guy and this isn't lip service. 
and he said, if I've got to kick a field goal tomorrow, I'm going to kick a field goal. And that may be what this is about. This is a long one. You might have been a, 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 a case to go for it, but this may be a chance for to give his kicker a little confidence coming in. There's confidence. Yeah, and in a non-stressful situation, but still, he's got to feel good about himself after making a kick like that. All smiles for the Packer faithful today. 41 to 3 after that 52 yard field goal by Mason Crosby. Well, they knew it was fourth and one. We were watching Mike McCarthy on the sideline. And he looked at Mason Crosby, said, Get out there, was pumping his fist, clapping his hands, said, Go make one. We need you. And that's exactly the mentality because going down the way and when they get in the playoffs, they may need him. So it is a matter of building up the confidence and the ego of some of your players. And that's just good coaching, knowing that every member of this 53 man roster is going to be called on at some point during the course of this playoff run. And Crosby hammers one two yards deep in the end zone that Rankin will bring out. Unwisely so, dropped at the 15. So after Coach McCarthy sent him out there, good hold. Good kick. And everybody rooting for Mr. Crosby to get it together, leading to the playoffs. Forty-one to three, with just under eleven minutes to play. Been a rough first year as head coach for the Seahawks for Jim Mora. First down and completed pass. Great coverage by Charles Woods. You know, a lot going on in the Seattle Seahawks organization. After so many years of stability, when Mike Holmgren was there, he leaves at the end of last season as head coach. Tim Ruskell, their general manager, recently resigned. There was talk about Holmgren coming back to the organization. Of course, he wound up going to Cleveland. And now I think questions abound as to, you know, what is the future? of this entire organization under the ownership of co-Microsoft founder Paul Allen. I mean, what do you do about a GM? Is a new general manager allowed to bring in a new head coach? Will the new general manager stay with Jim Moore? I mean, there's a lot going on here. And, and Jim Moore made a comment last week that he needed to change the culture of the Seattle Seahawks. Which is difficult because you're talking about a team that was five out of the seven years in the playoffs. Uh, they're used to winning. Well, we'll get back to this topic after the injury to Derek Martin. Derek Martin limps off the field. 10 18 to play. 41 to 3. And it's first down for Seattle. At their own 33 yard line. Blitz coming. Second down. Well, and to pick up on where we were talking about, the challenge for Jim Mora is when you talk about changing the culture, well, when you go into Cleveland, you go into to a, a place like Kansas City, you, you know, some of the other challenges into Arizona, Ken Wisenhunt going into an organization that had back to back winning seasons ever. Here we go to a no huddle here with. with uh, Seattle uh, it's a different set of challenges. It's a different set of challenges when you take over a team that had five straight years of winning the division and going into the playoffs. He's got a quarterback who still has plenty of life left only 11th year for for Matt Hasselbeck but a quarterback there's some questions about what his effectiveness is. You don't have necessarily that star running back. Uh, the one lone player defensively Alofa Tatupu has been injured. There's a lot of restructuring that has to go on and yet I'm not sure that the fan base in Seattle is really prepared for that because they don't think they're that far away. That's the challenge for Jim Mora right now. Hasselbeck sacked by Brad Jones all the way back to the 25 yard line. And then there's the additional challenge for Seattle in the whole Mike Holmgren saga here. And here you can just see the pressure coming off the, the edge here on Hasselback. Again, this is twice now on a three-step drop. He's had to hold the ball. 
if on a three step you don't have an immediate outlet you got to get rid of the ball because it's just going to collapse around you. But the whole Mike uh, Mike Holmgren saga of uh, does he come back doesn't he come back this is a guy that has been very successful for this organization just a lot of things going on in Seattle right now. That punt was blocked. So no roughing the kicker Jarius Lynn got a paw on it. Green Bay gets the ball at midfield. Just under nine minutes to play here at Lambeau Field in Green Bay and the Packers are eight minutes and 58 seconds away from officially being part of the playoff picture. A Packers win and either a Giants or Dallas loss puts Green Bay in the playoffs and the Giants are getting hammered at home by Carolina. Brandon Jackson for a yard. Uh, now this is the kind of dilemma that a Jim Mora has right now when you're going through what you're going through right now. I don't know what this conversation's about but it's probably not a good one. T.J. Hushman Zada obviously not happy with what's going on. Every aspect of your team your team members your ownership your organization questioning are we doing the right thing should we do something else that's the dilemma for a Jim Mora that's going to be his challenge not only next week but for this offseason and going forward Matt Flynn the backup quarterback took over for Rodgers in the waning moments of the third quarter completed pass to James Jones let's check in with Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles a win and the Saints clinch the number one seed in the NFC but they have blown a 17 nothing lead to Tampa Bay this is Michael Spurlock returning a punt 77 yards with two and a half minutes to go in regulation they're inside the two minute warning Saints trying to win they've got the ball tied at 17 we'll keep you up here Tom and Brian Thank you very much Kurt you and I'll see the Saints in their season finale against the Panthers and we know that Panther team's not going to roll over oh, next boy. week and that could still be for home field advantage should the Saints lose that game today Jordy Nelson in traffic and a late flag comes in wow that came very late. Great coverage by Trufant. Well, it's all going to be about the timing of Pass this contest. Interference, number 23, defense. Ball will put placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Trufant obviously matched up on Nelson. The ball is a little underthrown. So far, you're good. Yeah. And now he got got his hands early. Didn't come back looking for the ball. It's going to get called. Actually, the ball being a little underthrown played into their advantage here, and Jordy Nelson having to wait and come back for it. So now first and goal Green Bay at the seven. Amon Green checks into the game behind Quinn Johnson. And Amon Green gets a football. And picks up a yard. Cole making the stop. And we're seeing for Green Bay not only have they taken Aaron Rodgers out. You're seeing some other subtle substitutions. Jermichael Finley, the up and coming young tight end, is out of the game. Spencer Havener's coming in to do the same role that he has. Up they, front. They've put James Jones in at wide receiver. So they're they're very cognizant of the fact they're on the way to the playoffs and they're gonna rest and take make sure their players stay as healthy as possible going into the playoffs. TJ Lang in at left tackle, Evan Dietrich Smith. In its center and is that a touchdown? It is a touchdown from on green. You know Amon Green has been waiting a long time to do this again. Was there pretty much every single week for about seven years and he left to go to Houston injury play a couple of years. They brought him back. The third week of October and that is his first touchdown of the season and he's family here. He grew up here so to speak and obviously good feeling for him to be able to go back into that Lambeau leap mode. Forty eight to three. The all time leading rusher in Packer history with a touchdown.
48 to 3 the Packers in front Brian Billick one more week to go in the regular season and still certainly uh, spots available if you will in that playoff race in both the NFC although one less available by this game's end. Packers will secure a wild card spot. But when you look at the NFC and we know what New Orleans had done the entire year before finally losing a week ago now in a tight one today Minnesota looked great up until three weeks ago and now all of a sudden they don't even look mediocre. They have looked very bad in a couple of games including the thrashing they took against Carolina. Arizona times look spectacular as they did last week and other times they look awful like when they turned it over seven times against the 49ers. As Rankin brings it out to the 30. There is a penalty flag down. Personal foul for Scholar tackle 32 kicking team. 15 yard penalty from the end of the play. First down. Well, we look ahead in two weeks from now, the NFL's second season begins as the NFC's best teams go head to head to see which two have the drive, determination, and desire to play in an NFC championship game. Fox's coverage of the postseason begins with the NFC wild card, January 10th in high definition. You know, as you look at the teams, including the likes of Philadelphia, perhaps the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, do you see, I'm not going to ask you for one run, front runner, but are there two teams going into the playoffs that you say to yourself, I don't want to play either one of those teams? Well, you, you mentioned it earlier. Everybody's kind of shown their blemishes. Everybody's had a nice little run. Boy, they look like they're going to be the team to beat. And then all of a sudden, something steps up and surprises you. Like to get game today that we see that uh, New Orleans is playing against Tampa Bay. So I'm interested in seeing how the Dallas Cowboys play to finish the, the season. Tonight against Washington. And then next week, obviously, a big game for them as well. They showed some signs, particularly last week. Uh, that were very impressive and I think they're a team that you could you could worry about in the playoffs Believe me New Orleans is pretty good. You, you can't just dismiss them and I'm not ready to dismiss the Minnesota Vikings either So it's going to be a very very competitive NFC field Bushman Zada To the 29 of first down. Let's go back to Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles Saints trying to win another one at the end Garrett Hartley 37 yards out but ooh, ooh, ooh. That was ugly. And so they will head to overtime tied at 17 with the Bucks. Tom and Brian. So overtime it is in a big easy. Julius Jones a catch out of the backfield and A.J. Hawk runs him out of bounds. That's a first down of the 19. An interesting team to me is the Arizona Cardinals Tom. When they're playing well when Kurt Warner is in a rhythm and starts fast boy they can look unbelievable because they've got rhythm they've got explosiveness that defense but then like all these other teams all of a sudden doesn't take much they get knocked off kilter and they look terrible but they're a team uh, that could be very interesting in the playoffs I think you know the one thing about the NFC playoffs unlike the AFC is that one is laid off for Julius Jones is because of where the top teams are right now and where they probably will be in a week and a half from now it doesn't look as though weather is going to be a huge factor in the NFC playoffs at all. No you know when we were talking there and Rogers what he said you know here he's in Green Bay and he's going notwithstanding how it turns out and if Philadelphia's in he goes let me get this right you're worried about if I have to go into a dome in Minnesota in New Orleans in a, uh, a Dallas in Arizona you know what that sounds pretty good to me even if it's on the road. And for the first time in three weeks, the Seahawks have scored a touchdown in the second half of the game. John Carlson, the touchdown reception, 19 yards for Matt Hasselbeck. And this is a connection with John Carlson that has not taken place with the frequency that it did last year. This guy exploded onto the scene. Young man coming out of Notre Dame hasn't like this Seahawk team hasn't quite had the follow up year 
that a lot of people anticipated. Barre the point after. Making it 48 to 10. 415 left. This is just a corner right. Corner route by right here. You see Carlson coming off the line. Works his way into the corner. Nice air by Hasselback dropping the ball in. And again, Carlson, one of the young, good looking tight ends in this league. And someone they're going to count on going forward as we talk about the maturation of this Seattle Seahawks team and where they're going to go. Again, we remind you as we look to the final weekend of the NFL season here on Fox and games that will come your way in the early window that all of these games are subject to change as far as the start times are concerned. What we do know is the built Ford tough Fox NFL Sunday pregame show will begin at noon Eastern 11 Central 9 Pacific final weekend of the regular season and there could be a ton on the line for a number of teams. So our Cincinnati with a minute 37 has just gone ahead of Kansas City 17 to 10. If the Bengals win that game they are champions of the AFC North. Baltimore meanwhile starting play a game back of the Bengals has just fallen behind 23 20 at Pittsburgh. Raven still trying to get in as a wild card. Yeah and you knew it was going to come down to the outcome of that Pittsburgh Baltimore game and Pittsburgh if they can win even though they went on a five game losing streak big win against uh, the Green Bay Packers last week and if they can hold off on the Baltimore Ravens they're very much alive. Charles Woodson will bring this one back and he'll just run out of bounds. There's no sense in him Woodson taking a hard hit. All right, let's jump over to the AFC. Yeah, this is a little more complicated here. And weather will be a factor in the AFC. Now, if every game's played in Indianapolis, once you get near the end, you're inside. San Diego, good weather outdoor. Not the story with New England or Cincinnati or pretty much most of the other teams involved in the chase for the wild card. Denver, Baltimore, Jets still in it, Miami. A, a, well, you talk about a huge loss today. Miami just got drilled today. Yeah and that's a bit of a surprise. They had some momentum going uh, and and they were a team that I thought might be able to fight their way into the playoff picture but a big loss today. And that record does not show you because their game is not a final yet. Of course here's that play from last weekend that kept the Steelers hopes alive. Final play of the game to Mike Wallace. It was and you can see here and it's unfortunate because it's really not bad coverage but the DB Bell is looking the wrong way. You've got to always protect against the fade back throw or the throwback uh, fade on the backside. Had he looked to the inside and reached with his left hand. This is a game of inches Tom and that's just a perfect example. You, you reach with your right hand instead of your left hand and all of a sudden it changes the complexion of the game. Brandon Jackson the three touchdown game today he'll carry on second down. Well what a difference a week makes if you're a member of the Packer defense. I mean they were lit up by Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers. Twelve plays accounting for three hundred and thirty six of the five thirty seven they put on the board and then you look at today. Yeah and it really it was the big plays that's that's the one thing they the Green Bay Packers have played very good defense all year they've not given up a lot of big plays but the last three or four weeks and certainly the 12 uh, plus uh, uh, explosive plays that you're talking about by Pittsburgh was a huge part of that loss that's got to be a concern going in that is something I can promise you Dom Capers is going to address with his defense because it's probably the lone vulnerability that this Packer defense has shown over the last three or four weeks. And you know we asked Dom Capers at point blank and you got to admire that you can ask this guy a question and he's not going to get upset but he, it is a viable point when you look at the good teams that Green Bay has played this year the good offensive teams they've been lit up now. I mean they, they've really built a lot of their statistics and you give them credit for building them up but they have built a lot of their defensive statistics on some of the real also rands in the NFL and quite frankly some really bad offensive teams St. Louis Detroit Cleveland 
They didn't have a good game against Tampa. They played brilliantly against Dallas, the one good team offensively this year that they played well against. Detroit again. Baltimore's not a big offensive team. Chicago is not a big offensive team. But the clubs they played that are capable of scoring, they have scored against Green Bay. And we were here when they lost two big components of that defense. When they lost, they beat San Francisco, but they lost Al Harris and they lost Aaron Campman. That Those were big hits for them. So the challenge for Dom Capers against now, as he goes in the playoffs, he's going to face that bevy of good quarterbacks now. There's no hiding from it anymore. He's going to have to draw on all the experiences that he has to put together those packages that bring the pressure, bring those blitzes, but still doesn't leave his back end vulnerable, vulnerable to give up those big plays. Hasselbeck still in there, going to hand it off on second down for set inside the 42 to 38. Well, Hasselbeck trying to hurry his team to the line of scrimmage before we reach a two minute warning. And he's not going to get a playoff. So mercifully, we have reached a two minute warning. 48 to 10, Green Bay in front. Be a lot of celebrating going on in Green Bay, Wisconsin tonight. The Giants have already lost. 41 to 9 to the Carolina Panthers. You couple that with a Green Bay win here. And the Packers are on their way to the playoffs. Bruce Manzada, the catch to the 32. Of course, for Aaron Rodgers, it'll be his first trip to the playoffs. And we talked about what a young team Green Bay is. That's going to be part of this process. How does this young team handle itself in the playoffs? Which means, again, notwithstanding the most severe circumstances, they're going to have to do it via all on the road. We talked about likely in a lot of domes, with the exception being of uh, Philadelphia. But those are the challenges for Mike McCarthy with this young team. But he's got some key veterans that have been in the playoffs, like a Charles Woodson, uh, like a driver. These guys have been around and are going to be able to mentor the young guys as to this is how the temperament changes when we get into the playoffs. Oh, what a hit delivered by Atari Bigby. Well, Dion Butler. Mike McCarthy's enjoying himself right now. I know he's on the way to the playoffs, but I can tell you right now, look in his eyes. He's already thinking about how am I going to handle next week? How would you handle next week? I mean, it's not like you're playing for home field advantage. The only thing that maybe, you, you know, you're playing for is if somehow, some way, the only team behind you in the playoff race were to win out and you went out, you'd get that last game at home. But the chances of that are slim and none. We're going to see a lot of what we're seeing right now, a lot of second-line players. You may play your starters for a while. You keep a little bit of a rhythm. Keep in mind now, you're only talking about a 45-man active day roster. It's not like you can put a guy down and the other guy, you got a lot of bodies to put in there. Plus, if you put a backup in a starting role, he probably has to stay on special teams. You're increasing the snaps, the chances of someone getting hurt. So it's a delicate balance. Incomplete on fourth down. So the Packers will officially begin the celebration. Talked about Carolina beating up the Giants. Miami storming back. Yeah, this is this trailing is now 27 to 20. New England has clinched the AFC East. Tampa Bay in overtime beats New Orleans. So all of a sudden the Saints have lost two in a row. And they will play next weekend in Carolina depending on what Minnesota does. 
They may have to win that game to have home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Let's check in with Kurt Minifee back in Los Angeles. You mentioned Tampa Bay in overtime in New Orleans. They won the toss, marched down the field. Saints never touched the ball. Connor Barth, 47 yards with a game winner, and the Bucks stunned New Orleans after being down 17-0, winning it 20-17 in OT. Tom and Brian. All right, thanks so much, Kurt. Final play of the game. Matt Flynn takes a knee, and congratulations to the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers. Flinching an NFC playoff berth with a 48 to 10 win today over Seattle, coupled with the Giants' loss to the Carolina Panthers. This is an exciting time for the Green Bay Packers right now. Going to the playoffs, the focus. Well, Mike McCarthy will be able to enjoy the rest of this Sunday night. And we'll be back with more from Lambeau Field in just a moment.